And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. Here it is again, July 5th, 2022. Hard to believe we just already passed the Independence Day. Hope everybody had a good, safe, fun, happy, and ate a lot of good food there for the 4th of July. I know I did too as well. It was great to spend some time with family. As we're presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. And check them out at the website there at the bottom of your screen. Also, MitchMax.com and our friends over at Hank Jr. Productions. We're live on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel and, of course, at the Sports Guys. Uh, podcast.com it's a grand slam of sports and music you can also check us out over in the uk on nightwaveradio.net too as well so be sure to check that out great internet station out of oklahoma well i tell you what my next guest today she started at the age of six she performed on stage for the first time and never looked back season 18 <laughs> alum of american idol and nashville recording artist uh, grace lear joins us here on the program grace how you doing I'm good. How are you? It's uh, great, man. It's good to be back on the air. I took that little break, and now I'm kind of back in the swing of things. So it's always Do it. we need the mental break every <laughs> right now and then too. Absolutely. Same time. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about this journey. I mentioned there, you know, <laughs> stepping on on stage uh, for the first time, uh, the age of six, and and just getting your music out there in the Bay Area. Tell everybody about your story a little bit, and just uh, there's a sports tie here. I love this because you got a <laughs> Division One scholarship to to play soccer, or at least offered that University of Cal Berkeley. Uh, a lot of cool things that you've done, man, from an early age all the way through the idol competition and currently where you are now, right? Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been it's been a ride. I'm very grateful for everything. But yeah, I started singing when I was six years old and did my elementary school talent show. I'm from California originally, uh, Danville, California. Shout out. Uh, it's a little small town in the East Bay. And I just got the bug really early on um, being on stage. I think just that is my favorite place in the whole world. And at a young age, I could see how special it was to sing songs and connect to people. And I remember it was my talent show when I was in third grade and I sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow, uh, which I also performed on American Idol. Mm -hmm. And it, I think that was when my parents were like, okay, she can actually sing. Let's start working this muscle and get her into voice lessons. So I started doing mm -hmm. voice lessons at age 10, nine or 10. And it just took off from there. But at the same time, I was balancing soccer singing. I was in school. I was just a normal kid. Um, and, but I always knew music, you know, was mm -hmm. the end all for me. That's all I've ever wanted to do as a career. And it took me a really long time. I mean, it took me, you know, graduating from high school, then deciding to go play college at UC Berkeley, um, where I never stopped singing. Um, and then I moved to Nashville five years ago, but even in Nashville, my first two and a half, three years before Idol, I was working a sales job and mm -hmm. making, hundred calls a day <laughs> selling advertising. <laughs> and I remember calling my dad driving to work those mornings being like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Like <laughs> I want to do music full time. And I had a band here, but then, you know, I was very grateful American Idol came around and um, kind of gave me like a fast pass, you know, everything happened really fast. And um, all of a sudden now I get to do music every day and I'm mm -hmm. really grateful. And I have my first EP coming out in September. So <laughs> that's what we're going to talk a lot it's about been, and dive into this, a good uh, time. <laughs> this fantastic single is called after one. I, I just love it. It's Thank a great, you. great tune out there. And again, the EP is September 14th. That's going to be exciting for your first Woo. EP. Well, take me through the, the Cal Berkeley thing before I get to the idol thing, but uh, sure. so much ties into sports and music and how it ties over. You were mentioning to me before the show, you know, going on tour and how much of a grind that is and, watching these headline artists do their thing too as well it's almost like going back to school but you know being an athlete had to help you get that mentality down to take on this this music industry right absolutely i think athletics and sports it's i feel like at a very young age i learned work ethic was like the big thing for me and knowing learning that you know you have to put the work in you have to put the time and the energy in if it is something you truly love and going all the way back to soccer um you know, I grew up in a town, very competitive soccer. I was on varsity teams my whole life. I was a captain on every single team. I got a scholarship to play at UC Berkeley. And then you get to a university like Cal where it's the best of the best. And you look mm -hmm. around and you're like, oh my God, everybody's the best where they came from. <laughs> and I rode the bench for many years at Cal before I, a big goal of mine was to be captain, um, which I was very lucky to be voted captain in my fifth year. Um, but again, like, you know, it's just, you look around and it's the same way in Nashville, you get here and, you know, I was, you know, known to be a singer in my hometown. And then you get here and everybody's, you know, all these beautiful girls are, you know, wanting to be a country singer and, and do this for real. And you kind of have you, it's very humbling when you get here, you're like, wow, I have a long way to go. Um, mm -hmm. and it's about putting your time in, it's about repetition. It's about who you meet and, um, just working really hard on something you love. I think um, 
and having those goals in mind, you know, being goal oriented and saying, all right, these are my small goals for me. One of them was, yeah, to not, not be having a nine to five job that I didn't love to go to anymore. That mm-hmm. was a big goal of mine when I moved here and um, it took just work and effort. Um, and then going, yeah, when going on tour, I went on tour with Logan Mize this past spring and it was so much fun. And that was again, like my first time, I remember that first weekend, oh my gosh, I've never been so tired in my life. And I don't Mm -hmm. think that's something you can really prepare for. I think you just have to kind of do it. And the same way you learn to play, you know, 90 minutes on the soccer field, um, you're going to be dead the first 90 minutes. Um, But every (laughs) single time it'll get easier and easier. So every single weekend I went back out with Logan, it was like a little bit easier. Okay, Mm -hmm. all right. This is what I figured out when I need to eat, when I need to sleep and all that good stuff. So it's fun. Take me through the idol competition because, uh, first of all, how did this kind of come up? I know you auditioned. Was it in Milwaukee? I believe it was Milwaukee mm-hmm. as well. I, I'm how I remember that. If people tell me you've got an eidetic memory, I'm like, well, wow. it, it hits <laughs> pretty hard. But, um, you know, at the same time, season 18, um, so many great, you know, just great uh, contestants on there too who get in that, you know, with hundreds of thousands of people auditioning and you get to that uh, yeah. top 60, top 40, and they dwindle it down to the, the top 10. Uh, you came in with that, just that great work ethic you mentioned about being an athlete and knowing that this competition was going to be a grind up against the best of the best in the world of people auditioning when it comes to making a name for themselves to get their their uh, their music out there to, to the fans and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Knowing it's a very much a, a voting competition and after a certain amount of time, the judges do their thing, but then America takes over and that changes the, the landscape of the competition. How did you put all that in kind of in a nutshell and know yeah. that this was going to be a great way to boost Grace Lear as an artist and get your music out to fans knowing this was going to be a, a grind in itself in a tough competition. Yeah, no, that that's you. Yeah. You put it in a very, a very good way. It definitely, it's weird because it, you know, it's a competition, but the, at the same time, us contestants would look around and be like, this is so weird that this is a competition. We just love what we do. I mean, you know, music is music and it's subjective and it's, you know, at, at the end of the day, my mentality during American Idol, um, was to completely be myself all the way through and to choose songs that I just loved to perform, not choose the song that's going to show off how, you know, crazy notes I can sing or, you know, a song that's super popular and people will know it. So maybe they'll vote for me. I just chose songs that were authentic to me and that I really loved. And I knew that as long as I was myself the whole way through and, you know, being authentic, I think people will either like me or they won't. And Mm -hmm. that that was my mentality about it. And I think that goes through putting out my first record too. It's like, I'm really proud of these songs and I'm really proud of the Mm -hmm. music I've created. And I haven't tried to be a copycat or, you know, do what's popular on country radio right now. I'm just writing songs and, and recording songs that I just love. And I think people will connect to. And, you know, you just kind of, you're like, this is, this is me, this is Grace. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that my following that I gained during Idol, I think that was really important too. You're talking about taking a, uh, I remember before it aired, you know, a lot of it's pre recorded. And so I already knew I was in the top 20 before anything aired. And so going back to my work ethic, I was like, okay, how do I take advantage of this platform that's about to be in front of me and I'm going to be, you know, on national television? How do I, you know, tell my story in the most authentic way? How do I come off? via social media, um, you know, as as someone that people can really get to know, not just what they're seeing on TV, but, you know, social media is a pretty amazing thing to use and and just show who you are. So um, I did hire a social media manager Mm -hmm. um, and I was just like, hey, okay, here's the deal. I'm about to make the top 20 of American Idol. This is what's going on. Nothing's aired yet. You know, what can I do? And I need to learn this platform um, to, you know, to start building this team grace, to start building people that want to be a part of this journey um, because of just who I am. And so that that kind of was where it started. And even to this day, you know, I just I've just been myself. It tastes with grace. I love to cook and sports and coaching. I love to just, uh, you know, inspire people and and be a role model in a way. And also these heartbreak songs that are about to come out, um, you know, being just relating to that, that girl or guy that's going through it. So um, yeah, that, that, that was the American Idol journey for me was at the end mm-hmm. of the day, being myself. And if I were to give advice to anybody going on that show, that's all I would say, just mm-hmm. be you. Cause there's only one you and just own it. How much of a challenge? Cause this had never happened before um, yeah. <clears throat> going through that. I mean, you mentioned top 20 and then onto the top 10, 
but the the live performance is there in your own backyard in California. <laughs> I'd never in a million years, unlike I mean, a lot of people thought the same thing. We never would have this pandemic that the show was going to shut down. It's like, man, they just got to the top twenty, top fifteen, mm -hmm. top ten. That had to be very, I guess, ironic at the same time and very strange to do performances in your backyard. Of course, I'm still glad you guys got to get the, the music out there, but it was, it was, uh, they made, you guys made the best of it. The show did the best they could with, with the times we were in. And I thought it was, uh, like I said, very, very tough times, but what was that like for you guys? Yeah. It, you know, it's not how I imagined my mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. on American Idol going. Um, and for us, you know, we, my last performance, like live, performance on American Idol in front of people was um, my Hawaii performance of Natural Woman. And that was definitely the highlight for me. And then after that, they flew us out to LA um, in March, early March of 2020. Mm -hmm. And we were, you know, hearing about COVID and um, all that stuff. And then they just said, hey, we have to send you home. There's a stay at home order. And so we didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, and then they gave us a call a couple weeks later after we've just kind of been in quarantine. I decided to go back to my mom's in California because I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't need to go all the way back to Nashville. I'll spend some time with my family anyway. And they said, we're going to do the show from home. We're going to figure it out. And they just sent us a bunch of equipment. And so I had to wear all these hats in terms of being a performer, um, you know, doing all my social media, camera person. I had my sister-in-law helping me, um, but I was, you know, we set up the stages, we set up the cameras and, mm -hmm all that stuff. So it was, it was an experience, but I remember thinking, okay, people are sick and people are dying. And this is a really hard time for the world right now. And if I get to film a, you know, national television show from my backyard and do what I love and sing, I'm not going to complain. So we did make the most of that about, about, about uh, we did make the most mm -hmm. of it. And um, outside of all that, you know, making top 10 and, and getting a record deal was, was great so as you, as hard as it was it was hard for everybody <laughs> hard for everybody but it definitely paid off for you no doubt too as well and a lot of those yeah. great contestants in your in your class there for season 18 they a great job no doubt about it and of course uh, you know i always tell people you don't have to win the show to to go off and do big things in the uh mm -hmm. the music industry and do what you love to do well again the single is after one and of course uh would love to have you perform it for us today on the show if you want to. We'll take a break. Yay. We'll come back. She's <laughs> going to play this for us after one came out June 22nd. Again, it's uh, Grace Laird is the backstage pass live on the YouTube channel. And, of course, uh, the Sports Guys podcast.com, also nightwaveradio.net. We'll take a quick time out. More with Grace here on the backstage pass. And that's the links to tune in if you guys want to find the show and flip the show and ask us questions. Leave them in the comment box. We'll get to as many as we can here. A uh, quick time out for Banktail Whiskey and our friends over at Mitch Max and also Hank Jr. Productions. We're coming right back. More with Grace here. I uh, get to hear her sing when you come back. And we, we do have a question I've got to get to from someone all the way over across in the pond in England. David, we'll get to that when we come back here on the show. It is the Backstage Pass with Grace Lear. We're back in a flash. The Banktail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass 
And, you know, speaking of sports, I'm actually <laughs> ready for the World Cup coming up this fall for the Men's World Cup. I'm ready to watch soccer on television again for the first time. Yeah. Uh, over in, I believe it is Saudi Arabia coming up this year, too. So I'm looking forward to the uh, World Cup. I know you're going to be paying attention to that. Back here on the uh, oh, yeah. backstage pass, Grace Lear, we're going to turn it over to you. After one is the current single. Guys, if you love country, you're going to love this. Grace, it's all yours. Thank you. Yeah, this is my new single that's out right now called After One. Wrote it with Tate Howell and Dan Fernandez. And it uh, goes like this. Phone's been quiet, I guess you're really moving on. That didn't take long for you. One big fight and then you left me all alone. It's been three months now. I've cried and I've cried, I've sighed and I've tried to get on with life. But after 1 a.m. I'm at the bar with my friends, taking shots to pretend like you ain't there with them. After someone tells me the same old story, hide my pain in a hurry. I don't want them to worry. After 1, we used to be 2, 2. Can't get over you three. I gotta believe you ain't what I need. After one. I catch a taxi in the glowing city lights. Drop my purse at the door. Walk in the bathroom and I turn on the light. To take off this makeup that's been hiding the way that I've cried and I've cried, I've sighed and I've tried, but I'm going back again. Cause after 1 a.m., I'm at the bar with my friends, taking shots to pretend like you ain't there with them. After someone tells me the same old story, hide my pain in a hurry i don't want them to worry after one we used to be two two can't get over you three i gotta believe you ain't what i need after one i've cried and i've cried i've sighed and i've tried to get on with life but after 1 a.m. I'm at the bar with my friends Taking shots to pretend like you ain't there with them After someone tells me the same old story Hide my pain in a hurry I don't want them to worry after what We used to be two, two Can't get over you, three I gotta believe you ain't what I need After what? I love it. I've actually listened to it so many times too, as well. It's on that uh, playlist. No, <laughs> it comes up quite yeah. a bit. It's a catchy single. I love it so much. Can't wait for the Thanks. debut EP coming out September 14th. Uh, you guys uh, keep track of Grace's uh, socials out there too. We'll actually boost it on our pages as well, promote it and do everything we can to keep it out there. It's just fantastic music and guys, make sure you go get that. If you haven't already Cross all the uh, digital platforms back here on the show, the backstage pass, uh, Great, great uh, message in there, too. Like you said, a lot of cool things that uh, people can relate to, too. Like you said, relationships, things like that, too. A uh, great writing. You had to work with some great writers on this tune, too, as well, right? Yes, very lucky. Yeah, that one with Dan Fernandez and Tate Howell. And Dan Fernandez produced the the whole record, pretty much. Um, there is a one special song. I haven't been able to tease it yet um, <laughs> that he didn't produce, but I'm very excited for people to hear that, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Nashville is such a special town i mean everybody you know is here to help each other and we all have the same goal which is just to put out music we're proud of mm -hmm. and that we love and the co-writing community just really has been incredible for me so very and i'm sure on this ep a lot of great selection of songs and things that, that you're excited how many how many songs are we talking about for for this first one for september 14th 
There will be seven songs. Seven, okay. All right. yeah. So, you know, yeah. I'm just I'm want more. I'm just hungry, like most fans out there. Thirsty, <laughs> hungry for some yes. of that good Grace Lear music. Hey, take me back to to this year too, because um, and I assume this song uh, "Brought a Girl" is going to be on the yeah. EP to itself. Tell me all about mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, "Brought a Girl." Oh my gosh, um, that's a true story. So you know, from start to finish, that song is um about this guy uh that i was kind of on and off with and mm -hmm. i was throwing a party uh this has been now over a year ago i was throwing the party um and i was excited to see him and i had you know worn a cute outfit i was all ready <laughs> i had favorite beer that he likes and and all that good stuff and and he showed up to the party and he brought a girl with him so it was <laughs> one of those feelings of like oh, man like just a letdown Right. And so I had a write the very next day, my first time writing with Joy Beth Taylor and Sam Ellis. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to the right and thinking, you know, just still feeling the just the letdown from the day before. So I walk into the right. And typically the way, you know, right start in Nashville is just like, hey, you know, you talk about each other, where you're from, have some co have some coffee mm -hmm. and, you know, what's going on in your life. And I was like, guys, I just need to tell you what happened yesterday. And I just tell him the whole story. And Sam said, why don't we just write that? Why don't we just write, he brought a girl. <laughs> and Joy Best started playing her guitar. And, and I was like, yeah, I think I kind of want it to be upbeat. You know, it's kind of, it's it's an or unfortunate situation, but I wanted, I didn't want to make it so sad. It just kind of mm -hmm. sucked. And so I just was like, let's write, <laughs> let's just keep it lighthearted. And, you know, for me, 90s country is a big influence. So mm -hmm. I kind of like keeping it tongue in cheek and, and funny, the A-game box of wine, you know, all that stuff. And uh, the song, I progressively drink a little bit more mm -hmm. to numb the pain of this guy bringing a girl. So um, that song was my debut single and all the way down to the music video the guy in the music video who brought a girl is really the guy that I wrote the song about. <laughs> and the house that we shot the music video in is the house where I threw the party. It's all as real as it gets. So yeah. <laughs> I love that authenticity. Yeah. And like you said, that real feeling that somebody puts on it. I'm going to go into yeah. the comment box. I love some of these coming up. Rob says, uh, sounds great. Seeing you in uh, Springfield, Illinois. Oh. Uh, great with Logan Mize there too. And he's also Thanks, coming Rob. up with, uh, Springfield yeah, okay. Fun. On the boat a lot. Well, I tell you there. Ooh, <laughs> yes, I love it. You were saying, uh, I love that. For... <laughs> yes. Love that one too. Lorraine tuning in from Alabama. So a lot of great, uh, great people tuning in today. Hey, let's break that down a little bit more and kind of uh, elaborate a little bit more. 90s country, because I was influenced mm -hmm. by that. We've had a lot of great stars from the 90s come on this show yeah. to, to tell their stories too. And another one coming up here in a few, a few months that so Clay Walker is going to stop by here on the, oh, uh, the show him. itself and looking forward to that too. But just uh, what was it about that era? I know for me, I've got my own opinion, but for everybody, it's, it's something different about mm -hmm. the tunes, the writing, and just the minute you turned on any station you were listening to AM or FM that had a country type of format, the minute those first few notes played or that instrumentation played on that song, people knew before it got to a chorus or it got into the song, like the introduction, who that artist was, the title of the song, that made that era so great. What was it for you that, that you love so much about it? Oh my gosh, so many things. But yeah, I mean, I didn't grow up, you know, I grew up in California. Mm -hmm. So a little California country gal over here. But I remember listening to the chicks. For me, it was like those power female country voices, like Jody Messina, Leanne Rimes, Martina McBride, Faith Hill, Shania, I mean, the melodies of Shania and, and, you know, what she did with country music too. I mean, and the chicks, I mean, I just remember having all their CDs and playing them over and over and over again in my boom box and in the car. And, um, just, yeah, I feel like a lot of like my twang and my voice comes from that. I get compared a lot to like Jody Messina. Mm -hmm. Um, I sing heads Carolina all the time. Um, but yeah, and the stories, I mean, they were just relatable. And for me, brought a girl is, is a lot like that too. It's just kind of, it's that cheeky country. It's that, you know, kind of fun melody that I just absolutely love about nineties country. And I try to bring it into my songwriting and everything today. Um, mm -hmm. cause I feel like it's, it's coming back. It's there, you know? <laughs> and so I love it. <laughs> I love it too. And that's everybody here, the vinyl records and the whole nine yards. It's, it's a oh, pretty yeah. cool thing to hear that, uh, particular sound come back friends of mine mm -hmm. at the radio stations and of course uh, artists that have come by here on the on the show talking about just all kind of cool things that have made that made this mm -hmm. thing happen really well hey i know you got one more for us uh, i always say dealer's choice you've got so many 
Uh, just a great sound. I love the music, and I cannot wait. Again, the EP's coming out September 14th, so if you guys uh, want to put that on your calendar, know that uh, midnight, I guess, the night of the 13th, you can actually get it I'm going into the 14th, but we'll leave it at the 14th of September yes. to make sure you guys pre-order it. If there's a link there, we'll, for Grace, we'll share it on our uh, socials out there, of course, on the Backstage Pass Facebook page, and, of course, the Twitter and all the stuff out there. We'll definitely uh, get behind uh, one of the uh, up-and-coming artists, the rising artists there in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, what are we going to hear now? I guess I can play Brought a Girl. Let's do that. We're talking about it. Um, Yeah, my day. Since we're talking about this true story (laughs) that happened. Um, Yeah, Brought a Girl. And uh, thank you so much for having me, Brandon. This has been so fun. And thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate the support as a new artist. Um, And yeah, this is my debut single, The True Story. And um, am I allowed to? Am I allowed to say S H I T on here? You can. You can. It's a podcast. You sure can. <laughs> cool. Okay. Because I have these. Oh, I have them in my room. Hold on. Let me go grab them. I love They're it. So hey, funny. somebody just got one of your shirts from your merch store. There you go. So we create fans. So everywhere. we That's also good. have these that I brought. They say like for that. shit beer only. And that this is kind of part of the song. Um, I love that. Because his favorite beer, his favorite beer is Miller Lite. <laughs> um, which I love Miller Light too, but yeah, you'll get it as I, as I, as I keep, as I sing the song, you'll get it. Um, there we go. But yeah, this is called Brought a Girl. It's a true story. Start to finish. I was throwing a party, nothing formal, nothing rowdy. Little backyard string, my bonfire kind of night. Didn't send out invitations, didn't have no expectations Till someone mentioned you were swinging by If I was gonna make my move on you Tonight was bulletproof I brought my best lace dress I brought my best wingman thinking Tonight I'll give this and then I'll hang a world I brought my A-game box of wine I bought the cold beer that he liked When he walked through the door I felt my heart head for the floor Pour me a drink or two more He brought a girl So I made mental adjustments Had to bury all my judgment Little nice to meet you, hug and come on in She was spewing off how they met Blah, 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 how he's the best. Yeah, for sure, thought she'd be me. Am I drunk? Cause I can't believe I brought my best lace dress. I brought my best wingman thinking tonight I'll give this him and I think a world. I brought my A game box of wine. I bought the cold beer that he likes. When he walked through the door, I felt my heart hit for the floor. Pour me a drink. For four more, he brought a girl. Ooh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Ooh, no stopping me from cutting loose. Cause I brought my best lace dress. I brought my best wingman. Thinking tonight I'll give this and I think a world. I brought my A game box of wine. I bought the shit. That he likes when he walked through the door. I felt my heart hit for the floor. Pour me a drink for ten more till it's easy to ignore. He brought a girl. I love her music. I cannot wait for this debut EP to come out again. Grace Lear here on the backstage pass. Such fun songs. Uh, what makes country music, what makes country music tell stories and make it very <laughs> authentic out there. Back here on the Backstage Pass live on the YouTube channel and, of course, at the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. If you missed some interviews last week, they're all there. We archive everything, and we go live there, of course, as we count down to CRS 2023. And, of course, presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey, Hank Jr. Productions, and MitchMax.com. I want to ask you about this song you did with with Logan because we've had him on the show yeah. Um Several times with Logan Myers, a great, great time. Love Logan. Well. Um, nothing with you. Tell me about this duet and how this came together. Oh my gosh. Um, well, so I have been such a fan of Logan. Like I, that was such a fun, crazy week for me because I released Brought a Girl and I got an email that same week that Brought a Girl was coming out and it said, "Hey, um, 
Logan Mize is looking for a female opener for his spring tour all over the Midwest. Are you interested? And I was like, absolutely. Yes, 100%. And I had never been on tour and I love Logan, like used up is one of my favorite songs ever. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then the tour was happening that same week it got announced. And then Logan was like, hey, also I have this song do you maybe want to sing on it? I'm like, yeah. I was like, could it get any better? I'm like, absolutely, yes. Um, I, I did listen to the song first before I said yes, but I knew it was going to be good. And uh, the song was just him singing it. So he had, you know, sang the whole thing on his own. And I guess his perspective was he was like, just going to release it solo, but felt like it needed something else. And so I said, yeah, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just do harmonies? Do you want me to mm -hmm. just sing on the chorus? And he's the coolest guy ever. He was like, "How? whatever you want. You want a verse? I'll give you a verse. And I was like, yeah, I want a verse. So anyway, it was, it was really cool. And it was such a, a great collaboration. And to be able to have that song coming out and to be on the road together. I mean, he's now just a dear friend of mine, all those guys. And he could not have been a better first experience touring either because he's just the best. And that whole team was so warm and welcoming and made me feel so comfortable and confident up there every night and um and yeah i love that song and uh it's doing really well and i think people love it too so again it's that relatable country music about missing those little <clears throat> things with someone you know you don't miss the going on trips and and the big fancy dinners you miss the sitting on the couch in your pjs and drinking coffee and you know doing dishes and and just being next to that person um yeah. is what you miss most so i think it's it's a beautiful beautiful song and I'm very happy to be a part of it. Well, tell Logan we said hello from the backstage pass. I said hello, love all the stuff, and had talked to him in a while. But I know bigger things are ahead for him too, as they are for you at the same yeah. time. Too. All right, I got to get to the UK because I know David <laughs> always asks this question. I love the question because it makes me—he oh. uh, can say that the guitar, and of course, tell how important yes. it is writing and performing. That's a good question. I always love that. Thank you. Yeah. So this is a Martin. Uh, <laughs> it's a to Pele Dreadnought and it's mm -hmm. uh it's my first ever guitar. I remember I got I got it in California and drove it all the way here with me to Nashville. Um but yeah, <laughs> I love this guitar. You know, I'm not I'm not uh I'm still taking lessons. I'm still again soccer player still learning and, and mm -hmm. trying to get better at my craft. Um but uh yeah, I, I love this thing. I I don't have any other guitar. This is my only one. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I if I end up getting another one. I mean, I just love it. It it sounds great. It's it's done me well i love yeah. that too good question thanks for chiming in david we yeah. appreciate that got to do a little rapid fire here with you so whatever comes to mind just kind of throw oh it out gosh. there all right so uh favorite <laughs> food favorite beverage what's the gray slayer kind of go to when you're having kind of a night in what do you like to eat and drink pizza pizza is my favorite food and red wine is probably would probably <laughs> be my favorite be beverage and those two together would be a perfect night See, that's <laughs> we get along so well. That's my favorite food. It's hard to put it, but, it uh, put like hands down. down. Yeah. It's hands down my favorite. And when you come to visit Nashville, that's what we will do. We will go out for pizza because I know some of my I have like my list and okay. I have them. You know, it's like different types of pizza. Mm -hmm. I don't just scream it. I love all pizza, but you know, you're in the mood, <laughs> depends on what you're in the mood for. So I'll send you a list. All right, send me a list. There, we'll, we'll talk when I get up there. March, uh, 20, let's see, March the 13th, 14th, and 15th, Perfect. I believe it is, uh, for next year's Perfect. CRS coming up there in March, which will be fantastic. Fantastic, because that's another vacation for me, which will be uh, awesome to meet up with you. And I'll trust your list as we go in order from uh, oh, yeah. different places to, to try. Because I didn't get pizza when I was up there this past February. There's I got some... Martin's Barbecue and a couple other little places. Oh, that's but I didn't good. get pizza. So we yeah, got to we'll we got to go out for that, too. <laughs> All right, let's say Graceler hit one of the big lotteries tomorrow. What's the first thing she'd do with the money if you won the lottery? Oh, the... oh I would go to Italy. I'm kind of tying in the pizza and wine thing. But, like, I've never been to Europe. I probably would just, like, go... Mm -hmm. See Europe because I've never been. Yeah. I, that's that's and I, I would say the same thing with you. I travel, be gone for a couple of months, put the phone down, stay off social media, and just be traveling yes. with a backpack. <laughs> take the train. Yeah, and go, go see from, the world. From, you'll see the world. <laughs> just enjoy it too. All right. Yeah. Uh, the first, the, the title of the this may be a little challenging now. The title of the first song you ever wrote, or if you don't remember the title, what was the first Graceler song about? Oh my gosh, I feel like I wrote a lot of well. I wrote a lot of like love songs when I was in middle school too. There was this one called, um, oh wait, oh my gosh, what was it? Oh, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was this one, um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the title of it, but it was just like the most like, if you can think of like middle school heartbreak love, that's what it was about. <laughs> and I'm like blanking on the title. Um, 
But my first one I wrote here in Nashville, that's probably an easier question to answer, okay. uh, is it's called Tennessee. And okay. I wrote it with, it was the first song I ever wrote in Nashville five years ago with um, Kyle Klaus, who um, we started a band together in San Francisco. And um, we wrote it about kind of like missing home and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just called, uh, it, it's funny because it says I won't always be in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But it was like, we kind of always knew we were both going to be here forever. So yeah, <laughs> Tennessee. <love> that. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. All right. Uh, cartoons, movies growing up. Was it a mix of everything? What were you, what were you kind of into growing up as a, as a child for, I guess, the taste of television when it comes to cartoons or movies? Movies. Oh, yes. Okay. My brothers were big on movies and I've known to movie quote at the most random times. <laughs> like my Dumb and Dumber is probably like my number one thing I could probably quote that movie start to finish. And there's just like some really random like comedies for me, like the Dumb and Dumbers, the Super Bad, the Wedding Crashers. <laughs> <laughs> all that all that stepbrothers all that good stuff like i can and i get it from my brother who is we're, when we're in conversation people get annoyed because we like talk in movie quotes mm -hmm. it's very funny so movies. <laughs> <laughs> i love it too because that's what i'm doing now with all the disney plus stuff the moana the luca oh, yeah. the kids just like toy story she's zoned in on it and everything we do that i'll sing to her a little bit or bring something up for the Aww. movies and her memory is starting to I me mean, she is that's good she's on this disney trip right she is having a good time out there too well, i tell you i am uh so excited for you. So happy for you that this this worked out. And I knew it would coming off uh, just a great, you've put the work in. It's definitely paying off. And I cannot wait for this debut EP, seven songs to come out September 14th. And like I said, those yeah. songs after one and brought a girl will be on there. Two fantastic singles out now that you guys want to check that out. Make sure you do that. It's a Grace Lear here on the backstage pass. And of course, go get the music across all the digital platforms. Check her out on social media. And Grace, we'll have to do this again. And looking forward to uh, yeah. meeting when it gets to Nashville next March. Thanks so much for being on. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. And yeah, go pre-save the EP. We, we <laughs> gotta do that now. <laughs> coming out there uh, September 14th by Grace Lear, the tremendous Nashville Thank recording you. artist. Uh, we're off tomorrow and off of Thursday. My good friend Shane Owens is going to stop by on Friday. Good authentic country. If you love traditional country, uh, Shane Owens is for you Friday, 11 a.m. And of course, uh, coming up next week, we'll have some more great shows here on the uh, backstage pass. Of course, thanks to everybody that tuned in. We'll see you guys on the flip side. Uh, Friday, 11 o'clock Central Time, Shane Owens here on the backstage pass. Thanks to nightwaveradio.net and our friends over at the Sports Guys podcast.com and of course the youtube channel we'll see you guys soon hope you had a great fourth we're back on friday 11 a.m shane owens here on the show until then take care and have a great week